Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. We're joined today with Not Even That Fast, AKA Matt Howard. Um, and as you can see, we've got a bunch of parts in front of us. So basically when we took delivery of our FL5, um, we listed all of the optional extras from around the world. So from UKDM, from JDM and uh, USDM. And we've cherry picked a bunch of extras that we want to fit on our car behind us. Now, all these parts are genuine Honda. Some of them are pretty easy. They just either stick on or clip on. Um, but we've got a full carbon pack here as well, which is going to be a little bit more involved. But because it's genuine Honda, we know it's all going to fit perfectly. So everything should be, should be doable at home, really. Yeah, and it's all available on our website as well. It's all nicely categorised in the FL5 section, so you can check out all the bits that are available. And if there's anything that you do like, you can go and purchase it. So um, what we'll do is, I think we'll start by looking at like the UKDM options, show you what we've got, unbox it, and then get it fitted on the car. So let's do that. So the car that we've got behind us is a 2023 model. We didn't go crazy with the extras, but there are a few that we did spec from factory. So in the boot, we've got the cargo net. We'll, we'll show you that. So we've also got the red front seat and underfoot lights in red. And uh, we've also got a set of mats. They aren't actually on the spec list, but um, yeah, not sure whether they came as extras or not, but there are different mats that you can get. And um, the JDM ones are the best. They're yeah. super plush. But they're yeah, also it's always been the way with Type R's, isn't it? Yeah, they're also super expensive. Um, so yeah, the the light in kit was 295 quid, and the cargo net was 40 quid. That was uh, fitted from standard, including that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start with the UKDM extras that we've got here. So this is a carbon pack made up of three different um, components. So we've got the centre console. We've got the door sills and we've also got the um, carbon wing for the back, which is going to be pretty spicy, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be nice. Um, yeah, let's unbox it. Okay, so it's all unboxed and yeah, it looks pretty nice, doesn't it? The uh, finish is lovely. Um, I think these are all available separately. So if there's, you know, you just want the centre console, you can just go for that. Um, but this just is a pack of three. It retails at, um, I think it's just over £3,000. So. It is quite expensive, but the quality is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and this weighs, it'd be interesting, we can weigh this and we can weigh the standard one. Mm -hmm. um, that weighs, feels like nothing. Um, and the spoiler blade, there is one, so there's a JDM one and a USDM one. I'm not sure of the difference for the USDM and the UKDM that we've got here, but I know the JDM one does have a red weave in it. Mm -hmm. um, and this one doesn't appear to have, it's just like your standard. Yeah, it's got a bit of red though, hasn't it? I'm, I'm colourblind, I can't see these <laughs> things. Well, yeah, so it's nice that all this stuff is not your typical, like, eBay stick-on stuff. It is actually really nice. We've got, like, a nice red weave going down as all the carbon goes across, and it's, it's really nice. It does, um, you know, it, it is worth the difference over the, you know, any other sort of tat you could get. It is, it is really good. Yeah, OEM plus. Mm. I think, you know, like I said, with it being genuine Honda, we know it's going to fit great. Cool. So should we put this to one side and unbox the next batch? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so there's a few nice parts that we picked from um, JDM range. Mm -hmm. um, we'll start this side, Matt. What have we got? Yeah, well, all of these, apart from the gear knob, they seem to be about, and the wind flights about protection, aren't they? So that's PPF stuff. We've got a full genuine Honda cover here. Comes in a nice little bag, which is nice. Um, got this little handle for the Jesus handle, as I would have called it, uh, <laughs> yeah. for the passengers to grab onto when you're going a bit quick. Um, and then we've got a nice gear knob here with red leather. Nice, good quality thing. And then we've got some PPF bits here, haven't we? So we've got- Yeah, so we've got a door edge and handle protection film set. Yeah, so these, are the, these must be the door edges here, and then the handles are on this part just here. Yeah. And then we've got a rear bumper boot protection film. Yeah, that'd be this. So handy if you're loading stuff in and out quite often or if you've got a dog or something like that. Yeah, and, and they were relatively cheap, to be fair. I mean, yeah. The um, rear bumper protection film, that was 48 quid. Mm -hmm. And um, the door edge and handles, they were 89 quid. So, yeah. you know, if you wear a, like your wedding ring or whatever, a watch. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. When you go and buy a second-hand car, it's always scratch-like mm -hmm. behind the handle, so it's quite a cheap fix, isn't it? That. That's right. Then we've got a four-piece uh, wind deflector set. So these are the. Um, that's the rear window. This is the front window, and these are good if you just want to, you know, uh, have the windows open just a, you know, just a, you know, 20 mil or so. Um, if it's raining or something like that, it, it stops any of that getting in. You can still have some fresh air blowing through it. Um, quite a common mod that we've done on Type R's throughout the years. Really, I've fitted a lot of these for people. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So I think the next thing to do is start getting some stuff fitted, isn't it? Yeah, well, we've just got the um, US stuff oh, yeah. to have a little look at. Been to America, this is what we got. This is what we came back with, yeah. Um, some valve stem caps, and they say Type R on them. Yeah. Um, so when we were listing these, I think the USDM stuff was the last thing that we list. And yeah, you guys over there didn't have the best optional extras, it's fair to say. Yeah. Um, like I've said, a lot of the stuff, there's, there's the same accessory available yeah. in the three different markets. Um, but this is what we chose for the US. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Not going to spend too long fitting them. But yeah, I mean, it completes it, doesn't it? In fact, if you've got all the other accessories and that's what you want to go with, then yeah, by all means. Yeah. So come on. They're not, not, not expensive, are they, really? So uh, Matt might even let me have a go at installing them. Yeah, you can do one. Yeah. yeah. We won't even have to make a separate video out of that, I don't think. No. Okay, so yeah, let's get on and yeah, customise our F05. All right, guys, we're going to start with uh, probably the biggest visual modification we're going to do today, and that is to change this standard black spoiler for a nice carbon one. Uh, not only is it a different material, there are some different features to it. It's got a nice little gurney flap on it. It's got some little vortex generators underneath, and it just looks cool with its red weave. So um, really easy install by the looks of things. We've got, step down here, we've got three uh, Torx 30, uh, button head bolts each side, uh, which I'm just going to undo now. And then Glamorous Assistant Dave is going to help me lift off the spoiler and uh, attach the new one. So I'm just going to crack all these bolts off just so that I'm not left with one tight one holding it on. And what I'm going to do when I take this last bolt out is I'm just going to leave it in by just a few threads just so that once I undo this side the whole thing's not going to fall off and get scratched. So there we go, see so that's the last bolt we can see. Spoiler's starting to move, it's, uh, it's nice and free now. So. so ideally with two people, so Dave's going to jump in here and lift off the passenger side. Just unscrew that by the last few threads and then just lift the spoiler off and away. That's it. You can do it on your own, but it's going to be a lot easier with two people. I've got it. Yeah, I've got it, mate. Um, and uh, yeah, you're just a lot less chance of it getting scratched, especially when you're putting the new one on. Three. 3.24. Okay. Oh, well, it is definitely lighter. I'm going to struggle with this one. This one's. It is definitely. This, heavy, this one it? is definitely lighter. I'm going for like 1.5. No, I think this is at least two. Look at that. Exactly half the weight. Nice, Dave. You're calibrated, you are. <laughs> yeah, so we went to bolt the carbon one on, and um, the first thing we noticed was it's a sort of a different, it's not a different shape as such, but it's yeah. wider. It's half the weight of um, the standard one, mm -hmm. and that was kind of noticeable, wasn't it, when we took the gloss black one off? Yeah. Um, what did this one weigh? Was it 3.2 and this is 1.6? Yeah. So this is exactly half the weight. Um, it is a different shape as well, so if I lift both of them up, you can see that this... Uh, this one's almost got like a gurney flap on, yeah. on the back of it, hasn't it? Yeah, and the, uh, the ends are a different shape too. So this one's just a, you know, follows the actual shape of the wind. This one's actually got proper end plates moulded into it. And then underneath, we've got what I'm assuming is some vortex generators on here as well. Um, not really sure why you need them there, but they know better than I do. Obviously he does something, I guess. Yeah, um, but yeah, obviously still mounts in the same spot. Um, so It's also wider as well, isn't yeah, it? Yes, it's about six centimetres wider than the, uh, than the factory wing. So um, yeah, all good things really. Yeah, let's pop it on and see what it looks like on the car. Right, so um, back to install the wing. First thing we're gonna do is just give these wing mounts 
just a little bit of a wipe, make sure there's nothing there, no, no dirt or, or anything like that that's going to get trapped and, and scratch or damage the carbon underneath. I'm just going to get one bolt in either side um, and lower it on. So this is where you'd struggle with a lot of cheaper uh, aftermarket wings, is getting all six bolts to line up, but with it being genuine Honda, we don't have any of those issues. Just go, all of them just go straight in, no bother. Uh, no instructions came with this one as we as we received it anyway, so um, there's no uh, proper torque setting for these. I don't have a workshop manual to hand, but they're only M6 bolts, uh, so we're going to go with uh, 12 and a half newton meters. Um, that's absolutely fine. That's plenty because we've got six of them, and uh, you know a lot of spoilers are just um, stuck on, so it'll definitely be absolutely fine with that. You definitely don't want to go any tighter than that into carbon. Um, but that's that's should be about perfect. There we go. That's it installed. All right, so we're going to move into the interior now, and we're going to change the gear knob. We're going to fit the uh, center console carbon fiber and we've also got some carbon fiber for the for the door sills but we're going to do these just these two bits first so um the center console cover is really nice it just fits over that so it's got some adhesive underneath so what we want to do is we just want to make sure that this is perfectly clean now this is a nice new car so it probably is clean already but we're just going to use some uh isopropanol alcohol just to just to clean it just a little bit, we don't need much, just, just enough to make sure that there's no grubby fingerprints or fast food sauce on it anywhere. And we're just going to um, give it a good wipe over. And then on the back of the carbon here, there are some uh, self-adhesive strips, so just going to remove those. So yeah, in total we've got uh, seven strips there and it'll just fit over it. Obviously, get it right first time, but it's, it's nicely moulded so you can't really get it wrong. And we're just going to place it on, push it down all the way around, make sure it's on there nice and snug and not hanging off one side. But with it being genuine Honda, it fits absolutely perfectly. Really good quality piece. So... There we go, so that's the carbon center console. The next thing we're gonna change is the, uh, is the gear knob. Now, like all Type R's, it's a screw off gear knob. So we have the new one here. We can check the, uh, the thread underneath so we can just see there's no locking tabs or anything like that. We just need to unscrew it. So we'll get to what we're gonna do. Sometimes they put up a bit of a fight to be unscrewed, but generally they're all okay. So it's gone sort of tight about there, and it's it, you know third is pointing up that way. So we're just going to tighten it up by hand until we get third pointing straight towards the front of the car, like that. Touch more. There it goes. Now it's nice and tight. It's not going to come off. And we can just sort out the boot as well. And that's that. That's that fitted. Nice and easy. Nice and weighted gear knob. It's always nice in a Type R to have a a heavier gear knob than you would in a normal passenger car. It's something that's made the previous cars great and it feels good in this one too. So now we're going to move on to the, uh, the door sill trims and um, that'll be the interior finished. Right, so now we're going to do the uh, door sill covers here. So these just place like this on the door sill. Now they've got an L and an R on the side here. It says cover L front side out panel cover. So we're going to obviously place the Type R facing out so you can read it. Now there's no um, there's no template to follow with these, so you've just got to sort of put it where you feel is right. Now I'm going to we're going to go with sort of in the middle of this clip clipped out panel here, um, and then just central to there. So uh, just like we did with the sense console, we're going to clean the sill with some uh, isopropanol alcohol, and then we're just going to stick this down carefully because we don't want to have to do it twice. We want to make sure it's you know in the middle. For this and we want to make sure it's in the middle 
of these two here, but you can align it to the back here. You can put it up here if you want, you can put it down here, you can do whatever you want, but um, we reckon that it's best to go in the middle of this trim panel here and just keep sort of this gap here, the same size as this gap here. So that's what we're gonna do. There you go, and that's it, stuck down. You can uh, make a template if you want to, you can mark it up with masking tape, but you're not gonna see both sides at the same time. So as long as they are like about an inch in from this side, say in this side, and then you've got probably half an inch or maybe about 10 mil either side of this, it's absolutely fine. So we're just gonna do the same on the other side. Matt's kindly let me do another install. I've got the rear strap grab handle thing off of JDM. Installation is simple. Simply drop this handle, slide it over. There's two big press studs. And there you go. It's got a bit of Velcro, so it tucks up out of the way. We're calling this the Jesus handle. So if you terrified passenger in the back, hold on to it. Uh, if you break your left arm, slide it through. You put it in the front, do what you want with it. We don't really understand why you need it, but uh, Honda say that it's to not assist when you get in and out of the car, it's to help maintain posture. So I guess you can drive around in your FL5 with a straight back and having a nice posture. Yeah. Right, we're gonna move on to the uh, wind deflectors now. So uh, these, didn't come with any instructions at all, so I've had to kind of figure it out and I've already got one side on the car. Um, so we have these little brackets here. Uh, there's two types of these brackets. They look similar to start with, but these ones here, I've got A stamped into them. And these ones have got B. So we've got three Bs and one A. Now into those go these little plastic rivets. And these go through these little holes in the wind deflectors. There's two in the front and two in the rear. So four little plastic rivets per side. Now the kit also comes with uh, these clear strips. There's four of these long ones and eight of these short ones. And to be honest, I have fitted one side now, as I said, I cannot figure out where they go. So I'm just gonna leave them out now and we're gonna contact Honda and we're gonna see where they go. We might add it into the description or onto the video at the end there. So uh, for now, we're gonna get these uh, fitted um, so they, as well as using these plastic uh, rivets there, we also have um, this you know, self-adhesive double-sided tape. So first thing we're going to do is get these brackets in place. And to, to do that, I'm going to use some masking tape and a, a pen. We're just going to offer these up, pop, pop some masking tape roughly where the uh, clips want to go, and just mark up with a pen exactly in line with that little hole. Um, so we're going to do that for the both, both the front and rear now. Right, so moving on to the car, the first thing we need to do is work out where we're gonna put the little metal brackets that hold these, uh, the pins for these holes. So the first thing we're gonna do without peeling anything off, we're just gonna hold it to the car. Now, if we look at the car, there is a small like satin plastic or rubber cap there that's at the end of these rails. And we're gonna basically hold it to that. That's, that's gonna be where these start and end. There's one either side of the, of the door. So just holding it like that, get a piece of tape, put it on the, on the door and take a pen and just mark where they are. Now, when you put these little things in, you can move them about. We're not cutting anything uh, to, to get them on. So it's not the end of the world. We will be able to move them you know, around. You'll see that when we slide them in. So just, you know, just roughly, you know, just so we're within a few millimeters of where we need to be. Uh, that's what we're going to do. So now we can take that away and then we'll put the brackets in. So these brackets are a funny shape, as you can see. Um, you might wonder where they go. So they actually go behind this little rubber trim here. And the easiest way to get that out is just to use this corner here and just pull it down. 
put these clips inside there. So I'm just going to pull that out. It's in there fairly well. You can see it just pulls out like that. So we're going to pull that down and we're going to slide these in. So they go in like that. So the B and uh, the T20 is facing out towards you. So um, they are both Bs at the back here. So we're going to put those in now like that. And we can just slide that across to where it needs to be. Then we can start pushing this back in. Again, put this one in, just hold it up like that and you'll see that it just, this window seal just holds it in place quite nicely. So I'm going to put it back in where it needs to be. Like that. And then we just, it's a bit fiddly to do, but we can get the window seal back in where it should be. Like that and push this back under here. There's a little tab that needs to just go back under this black plastic part here, like that. So I'm just going to push the corner back where it should be, make sure that we're in the whole way. And then even though it's in, even though the window seals back in, we can still slide this across wherever we want it to be. So we're going to put it about where we put our, our marks there. And then we're going to bring the wind deflector back on. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just make sure this uh, surface is prepared. We're just going to clean it up because we are going to be sticking the wind deflectors to that as well as pinning them to these. So I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, IPA on our rag and just clean it all up. Make sure there's no grease or fingerprints or anything like that. Anything that's going to stop the, uh, the adhesive doing its job. You can get our wind deflector. Just peel up the first centimetre or two of the backing. And what I tend to do is just fold it at 90 degrees like that so that when we stick it on, it'll be sticking up and I can just peel it off as I go. So uh, we've got one at the front and one at the rear as well. So again, I'm going to do the same thing again. Just so that if we do make a mistake, if it touches where it shouldn't do, it's not going to be stuck there permanently because it's so small. I'm just, just going to take that end one off. So with the uh, wind deflectors, wind deflector in one hand, I've just got these two pins in this hand here. So I'm just going to offer it up to where we place the, uh, the brackets and we just, oh God, that's that one gone. We just slide the outer bit into there and then that's it, popped it on. So that's, that's it now, that's where it needs to be. I've dropped the other one inside the car, so I'll just get that. Then we find the other bracket, might need to slide it across a touch. Again, just pop it in. That's it, nice and secure, you can't pull it off. Then we're just going to make sure that it's where we wanted it to be. So I need to move it over just a, just a touch and that's fine. It's all good, it can, st it can do that. So I'll stick this back end down and then the front. And then I'll pull this out like that. And that way I don't have to try and reach behind it. And we're just gonna, with a rag, cause this, this sort of plastic does scratch quite easily. So be careful what you use. I've just got a nice soft rag here. Just gonna make sure we push that adhesive down. And that's it. That's one, that's the rear one fitted. So we can take off our guide markers now. So the front process is exactly the same. The only thing we need to remember that's different is that uh, the, instead of having two Bs on the, on the rear, we've got a B at the back and we've got an A at the front. So again, we're just going to offer up the wind deflector. Keep in mind that little uh, satin um, end cap there to the, to the frame rail. And then we're going to just use a bit more tape. Mark it up where it needs to be. Remember, we can move these. So if you think, well, maybe I wanted to be a bit tighter toward the front or the rear, you can do that. It's absolutely fine. It's just a rough guide because it's very easy to move them. Just a few mil here and there. So there we go. So that's marked up now. So we're going to put this down, get the brackets in and put the clips in. So again, I'm just going to start at the corner. I'm going to put the A in first because I'm basically, because this is quite tight down here in this corner it's easier to work from this side. So if you can just peel it down like that, you can actually slide it along the whole way, which I'll show you. And then after that, I'll put the, the B one in. So we're just gonna pop it down like that. Pop the A in, slide that down a bit. And then 
we're gonna pull this down again and pop the B in push it push it all back up like that so we don't need to go mad we can if we just peel that down like that we can actually move this along the whole way down the uh, down the door like that make sure that it's all tucked in nice afterwards put the B to where you want it to go at the back and then just like the uh, rear we're just going to prepare the surface and then we're going to clip it on and stick it on okay so now just holding it up again pop the pins in nice little clip in there we go so once we're happy that they are sitting where we want them which this one is we can pull out the back in from the uh, adhesive there and stick it down again using the rag to make sure we don't scratch anything start at the front here because we do need to sort of tuck it in we need to push it sort of down a bit towards the, uh, the bottom of the door and in so once that's in then it will all just sit really nicely against the edge of the door and that's that wind deflectors are on so we can again we can remove the little masking tape bits our little guides job done so let us know in the comments let us know if you can think where those little clear bits go originally i thought perhaps went under here to protect these uh, little bits but i tried that it didn't really look very good so i removed them and i can't work out where the long bits go whether it goes on here whether it goes under here but nothing touches under here so yeah i'm not sure let us know what you think and like i say if we can find out from honda we'll put it in the uh, description or or on the video if we get time Okay, so we're going to install the um, sort of PPF tape now, if you like. Um, you're going to need a few little things for this. So you're going to obviously need your trusty old rag. Give it a good um, wipe down. You don't want any dust getting under there. It's going to have bubbles and stuff. Um, so just, yeah, give that a good uh, wipe down. Now, you're also going to want a bit of masking tape as well. Um, this is a little bit I prepared earlier. Um, yeah, this will just help you keep the film in place if you're installing it on your own. Um, and what you want to do with this driver's door, uh, passenger side door, side, sorry, is go from the bottom. So from the bottom of the door, you can line it all up. Um, we've got these black side stripes on, and we're just going to put it straight over that. So w once you relatively have... I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. So when you're relatively happy with the position, if you grab your masking tape, you don't need loads, you just need a bit to hold the film in place on, on both doors, it's not going anywhere. And you want to start from the bottom. Um, squeegee. And then it comes off in um, sort of two sections, the backing tape. So if you get like a few inches off and fold it up, the trick is not to touch the back of this film. If you touch the back, you're going to get your dirty uh, fingerprints on it and that's going to show when it's on the car. And what you can do is just line it up, you can now take this off. Once it's on you can sort of pull it off, it's quite a malleable material if that's the correct word. It's quite forgiving. You're best doing this in sort of a, a garage or a cool, cool place. and then just work it up from the bottom with your squeegee holding this back bit being careful not to touch the actual film itself obviously if it doesn't go into position right you can just pull it off a little bit and reposition it just sort of uh, hold it in the position that you want to go in and then while you're squeegeeing it on you should end up in that position so once it's all squeegeed down and on nicely, there's a nice tab at the bottom. You can literally 
peel the blue film off and uh, there you go. It's on nicely. Uh, next up, we've got four pieces. These just go behind the door handles. Um, I'm going to install it in situ. Um, but ideally, you would want to take these handles off to do to get it 100% perfect. But yeah, we're just going to put it on and go from there. Okay, so we're just about to do the uh, boot strip now. Um, this will just stop any sort of scratches or anything on this boot lid bumper, lid bumper, top of bumper part um, when you're loading anything in. Um, just a word about lining it up. There is a nice, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a nice um, like triangle cut out so you can line that up with the boot latch here. Um, and there is a line, there's almost like an indentation here. You want to be going over that and lining it up with this, this curve here because if you line it up off here, it's going to fall over the back. And I mean, you can do that, but it's going to be way harder to apply. So yeah, let's get this on. One tip that I can give if you're installing this and um, you sort of want a bit of forgiveness when you're doing it, is to get a spray bottle with some water in and you can spray um, like the surface, so the bumper. And you can also spray the back of the um, film as well. So when you put it on, you can slide it around um, and then you, yeah, you can give yourself you know, three or four chances to get it in the right place and then just squeegee the water out and it'll all, it'll all drop out um, when it warms up. Um, I've just gone in dry. Right, last thing we're fitting to finish the car off, some Honda valve stem caps. So what's funny about these is that while we didn't have any instructions for the wind deflectors, we do have some instructions for the valve caps. So don't use pliers, just use your fingers. So that's fine. So th these are actually, as far as valve caps go, quite good because they've got an O-ring inside them to help seal it up. Whereas, you know, your standard plastic ones don't, they just have a, they're just plastic. So we're gonna pop these on one by one. Like it says, we don't need to go too tight on them. Just so that it's, uh, it's there. So just so it's not gonna come off. That's it, that's as simple as that really. I'm gonna do all four wheels. And uh, that's our Civic Type R, fully uh, fitted with the OEM optional extras. Right then, so that's all the stuff we had fitted to the car now. Um, my favorite bit is probably the wing and the carbon pack in general. Really nice to fit that, makes quite a nice difference inside and out. Um, gear knob was good too. How about you, Dave? Um, yeah, I got to agree with you. Obviously the carbon pack's the most striking change that we made. The wing's nice, um, really sets off the back end now. One of them, if you know, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously the gear knob's nice. Um, the wind deflectors are obviously going to help us when we're doing yeah. long journeys, crack the window open. Yeah, um, they're really nice and satisfying to fit as well, really. Really, obviously being genuine Honda, something I've said a million times in this video already, just fits the outline of the door perfectly. It's just really nice to get on. You know, you fit some of the cheaper brands, we're not going to name them, but you know, sometimes a bit hit and miss. These ones are really, really good. And yeah, um, we also put the film on the edges and the boot, the door handles, so yeah, it's just peace of mind when we're getting in and out of it. Yeah, they suit different people's needs, don't they? Yeah. Um, obviously the covers, they both fit nice. Mm -hmm. um, perfect for if you're taking your car off the road during the salty winter months. Yeah, if you've got a nice garage, always nice to put an indoor cover on, stop the dust building up on it, stop uh, you know people putting things on the top and you know drinks or whatever that happens in your garages. Yeah. You know, I know that's what happens in mine. So yeah, really nice to protect the paint, nice and soft. And yeah, as always, if there's any parts that you've seen or you know, we do loads of FL5 parts now, so check them out on our website. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. And thanks to Matt once again for taking the time out and coming to help us.